Uh, in this section, we talk about uh, uh, the concept of stress function. Let us look at some uh, mathematical skill. For example, we have a, we have a function, uh, we have an equation like this. Puzzle of f, puzzle x, and puzzle g, puzzle y. Uh, pa, uh, they sum together equal zero. Then we can make a guess that the guess, uh, make a guess that the function, uh, the the solution is look like this, okay? Uh, f, you want to solve f and g, and f and g is look like this. Why? Because if you can move this, uh, this term to the right hand side to get this one, right? And then uh, you say that this one can be expressed like this, but if f equal to puzzle 5, puzzle y, then this puzzle 5, puzzle xy, this is uh, if g equal to puzzle 5, puzzle x, then this is puzzle 5, puzzle x, uh, puzzle x, puzzle y, minus, minus, plus. So we, from this one, we get this one, and this one, we get this one. So uh, from this EC equation, uh, we can uh, make a guess that the solution is just look like this one and this one to okay, get here. OK, uh, now, for a more complicated uh, situation, like the 2D, two-dimensional equilibrium equation like this. See, this one is this one, and this one is this one, okay? So, uh, this set of equations um, have similar structure uh, of this equation, okay? So we can make a guess. Uh, from this one, we move to here, and then we make a guess that this one equal to this, and this one equal to this. The same way, uh, the, in the same way, we can move this term to the right hand side to get this one. And this e equal to this, and this equal to this. In this way, we can have the, the stress field expressed uh, in terms of one single function, okay? Called the uh, area stress function, phi. See, at the very beginning, we have two equations for free and long. One, two, three, okay? Two equation, free and long. Uh, the best you can have is that you reduce the, the number of unknown by two, right? So uh, no matter how, this is, there will be only one unknown, right? This is the unknown, fine. So now this is the unknown. Now this, this free unknown can be expressed in terms of only one unknown, okay? So after this procedure, uh, this equation uh, 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 can give up uh, can give us a very handy formula like this. Um, this phi called the area stress function. Uh, to memorize um, as a mem uh, as a mem uh, um, uh, as a memory uh, of the of the what of the uh, person who invents uh, such kind of idea. Okay, so um, if you have a stress like this, and then you satisfy this. If you have a set equation like this, and you have this set of expression, they are equivalent. Um, now we can um, do the similar thing. See the equation, equilibrium equation with body force like this. This is the gravi gravitational force, huh? See, in this equation, uh, before we have low body force, so we have low body force here. In this equation, we have the body force. But I just want to mention that the same mathematical uh, game can be carried out to obtain uh, this uh, set of uh, expression, this low uh, difficulty. You can you check it by yourself. Now, once we have this uh, expression, uh, we also uh, like to consider the two-dimensional Hooke's law for pen strain case. Huh? Uh, we have the stress strain relation like this, and then we carry out the, the inversion, okay, to get this expression to express the strain component by the stress component. Okay, you can do this uh, inversion by yourself. Um,
we uh, let us we return uh, the ex uh, the the result right like here. We we are expressing the strain component by the stress component, right? Now the stress component can be expressed in terms of the Aries stress function, sigma x x equal to phi y y, sigma y y equal to phi x x. Okay. So in this way, the the string component can be expressed in terms of the area stress function. This one also, phi, sigma y y equal to sigma uh, phi x x, sigma x x equal to phi y y. Okay, and sigma x y equal to minus phi x y minus phi x y. So this expression uh, tell uh, tell us that uh, the string component can also express in terms of the the stress function. Okay. Now one more relation to be considered is the compatibility equation. Remember this one equal to this. We talk about this uh, equation before. Now we uh, apply this equation uh, to to derive uh, some new equation. This is the compatibility. This one is the compatibility equation. Now, the string component is like this because the string component equal equal to this one. And we put it like here. Little a is this set of constant, and then this one uh, is this because this one is equal to this one, we put it here. Okay, once we do this, we carry out the differentiation. Uh, phi xx just equal to this, phi y y equal to this, phi x y equal to this. Now this one uh, means that the differentiation with respect to y twice here, uh, this is the differentiation with respect to y twice. So totally, okay, this one and this one become the differentiation of y uh, four times, okay, and then uh, this one and this one will give us this, and this one and this one will give us this, and this one this one will give us this, and then we uh, we collapse terms uh, because this term and this term are the same, okay. We so this one and this one will have this one, so and this one this one will have this one, okay. So. Um, it looks um, more uh, more simple now. Now, how about um, uh, the uh, the other terms? Uh, this one equal to this. Now, this term equal to this one. So we put it here. Okay, this one is this, and this one is this. Now uh, we carry out the differentiation uh, here to to get this one. Okay, so um, it looks a little bit complicated, but a can be cancelled out, okay, and this term can be combined with this term. Eh? This term and this term can be uh, combined together, okay, like this. We we write our uh, we saw before here, and this one move to the but we move this term to the left hand side of the equality to get this one, right. And then, see, 4 lambda minus 2 lambda equal to 2 lambda. Okay, so here equal to the, And also we can uh, draw the common factor 2 out to, to get this one. Now, see, 2 mu plus lambda. We have 2 mu plus lambda here. So we can cancel out this term to get this concise uh, expression. We call this uh, the by harmony equation, which can be also expressed in terms of this. Um, <coughs> see, uh, we repeat the whole thing uh, all together. From the equilibrium equation, we get this one, right? Equilibrium equation, we get this one. From the Hooke's law, uh, from, from the Hooke's law, we get this one. From the compatibility equation, we get this one. And finally, we end up with this one. 
So this one contain all the information, equilibrium, stress swing relation, and also the compatibility relation. So this equation uh, is exactly the, the the equation we want. Okay. So uh, in one equation for one unknown, we can solve this equation for the unknown phi. Okay. Once we get phi, once we get we solve um, the Bar-Hellman equation phi, and then we can compute sigma, the stress field, by this formula. This, right? Or this, okay? So once you get phi, you get the stress. Once you get the stress, you can use the Hooke's law to compute the string. And then by the integration, you can get the displacement field, right? So uh, the whole the whole problem, you know, uh, end up with a single unknown phi. So now you focus on the mathematical skill to obtain the only unknown phi. Okay. Once you get phi, you get everything. Okay. Just like this. Okay, that's our old version. You, if once you get money, you can solve all the problems. <laughs> Just something like this. Now, um, you can derive the same by harmony equation for Penn's chess case. See here, we use the Penn's chain, Hooke's law, right? But I, I want to tell you, you can. Uh, repeat the same uh, procedure for Penn's check uh, for Penn's chest Hooke's law too okay without trouble and we and you will get the same equation this one you will also get this equation by consider uh, Penn's chest situation now uh, the third one the we the third remark is that there is no material constant huh? Uh, this point need to be explained. So in this equation, there's no material constant. And then, once we solve this equation, we get everything, right? Then you, you, you will have a doubt, uh, you, you have some doubtful point on, uh, some doubtful points uh, in your mind. See, uh, different material uh, will, have, will, be, will have different behavior, right? Uh, now, uh, your equation doesn't contain any material constant, so it is a little bit unreal. What do you mean unreal? Let us consider this one. Huh? So, example, we have a steel beam, very stiff, very stiff, huh? subjected to some loading. We have the quantum, uh, cotton beam, very soft, subjected to the same loading. They, they are in the same shape and same size. So this is still this cotton. So the material constant will not be the same, but the equation is the same, huh? same equation. Understand? You have the same equation because uh, it doesn't depend on the material constant. Even though it is very stiff, it is very soft, it doesn't matter. You still uh, have, you, 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 you are having the same equation for these two different problems. Now, they have the same loading, they will have the same solution. Once you get the same phi, you will have the same stress, right? Now, uh, is it uh, a little bit weird? It is strange. Uh, see, uh, a very stiff beam and very soft beam should have different behavior. How come their stress are the same? Then I tell you, uh, even though they have the same stress, they will have different strain, not the same. Huh? The, uh, the strains are not uh, a lot the same. And the displacement are not the same. Why? Even though you have the same set of stress, but the but the strain huh, should be uh, calculated from the Hooke's law. Huh? See, even though you get the same stress, but you see here, you know, the material law will will change uh, uh, um, the behavior of this stress. 
So different uh, uh, material, you have different strength, even though you have the same stress, right? So uh, so long as the, the strengths are different, then the displacements are different, okay? The fourth uh, remark is this. This equation is only suitable for traction boundary condition, uh, boundary well problem. What do you mean? means that all the boundary conditions should be described by traction. Example, uh, if you have a ring uh, like this. On the outer surface, you have some traction. And the inner surface, you have the traction too. There's no displacement to be described on the surface. See all tractions on the surfaces. So this is the uh, boundary uh, traction boundary problem. And for such kind of problem, this equation uh, is very convenient to be applied. Now, let us look at uh, this, uh, this type of situation. Example, all the boundary here, see this is the rock, and this is the soil in the middle. You put a steel plate on the top and then suppress it. Suppress it, okay, for soil consolidation. Now, here, the displacement are zero. Displacement are zero, displacement are zero. And here, displacement u equals zero, but we go to minus two. See, all these boundaries are described by displacement. So they are called the displacement boundary well problem. And I want to mention that for such kind of problem, this equation is not very convenient to apply. Why? Once you solve the equation, you get phi, and you need to match the, 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 the function phi to the boundary conditions, right? But this boundary condition uh, are related to the phi very, uh, in a very com uh, complicated way. So uh, when you solve this equation, there's no problem. But when you try to relay phi, the function phi, with the boundary condition, you will have trouble because the, the displacement uh, cannot be expressed in terms of phi very easily, okay? So for displacement boundary wear problem, this equation is not very suitable. Another situation is this. Mixed type boundary wear problem, mixed type, means that some of the boundaries are prescribed with traction and some of them are prescribed with displacement. Let us look at an example like this. See, at the two ends, we are having the fixed uh, uh, condition means that the displacement are all zero. But on this upper and lower surface, we have some traction, okay? So, these two boundaries are described by traction, these two boundaries are described by displacement. This is called a mixed type, okay? This called the mixed type boundary well problem. And such kind of problem is not very uh, suitable uh, for the, uh, the uh, biharmonic equation too, okay? Because uh, when you solve the problem, you still have to deal with the displacement condition in a very difficult way. Now, for such kind of problem, when you have to deal with the dis uh, displacement uh, boundary condition, uh, what kind of equation you, 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 you should use instead of the biharmonic equation. Means that if you are dealing with displacement boundary well problem, you cannot use this equation. Then what kind of equation you, you can use? Let me derive the equation for you. This one, okay? We start with the equilibrium equation. And then we replace the, the stress by the strain according to the Hooke's law, right? And this year's stress replaced by the, uh, by the strain according to Hooke's law. And then the strain can be replaced by this, absolute xx equal to partial u partial x. This one equal to this, this one equal to this, and this one equal to this. And see, in this way, all the unknowns are u and v, right? There's no stress, no strain anymore after this procedure. Only you and we are remain. You can apply this process, similar process to the 
second equation. So you can turn the equilibrium equation to two equations uh, for the unknown u and v. So these two equations uh, can be uh, deal, uh, can be used in the mixed type boundary wear problem and the displacement boundary wear problem. Okay. Uh, the the eighth remark, we can what uh, solve the the general solution uh, for phi uh, by using the skill of uh, complex variable. How to do it? Let me show you. From here to here first, um, we can express the equation by x y, but also z and z bar. How we divide. Uh, define z equal to x plus i y, z bar equal to x minus i y, and i equal, uh, i square equal to minus one and i fourth time equal to one, and then this one uh, plus this one, you, this one will cancel out, give you two x and then x right, the same one, this one minus this one will give you this, okay? So x y can be expressed in terms of z and z bar. Right? So uh, let us uh, see what happened. If you have a function uh, of x, y, uh, you differentiate it with respect to x, and then you replace x, y by this one. Right? Then you had to use a chain rule to carry out the differentiation. Like this, the chain rule. Okay? But now, puzzle z puzzle x equal part z. Puzzle z puzzle x equal to 1. Like this. And here, puzzle z bar puzzle x equal to 1, 2. So you get this one. So you t this is f, this is f, this is f. So you can cancel out. Cancel f out to get this one like this, this one like this, and this one like this. And this is the uh, relation between the differential operator. Okay? Same deal. Uh, you can deal with puzzle f, puzzle x, and puzzle f, puzzle y. The same thing. The same thing, the 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 chain rule. Now puzzle z puzzle y here, puzzle z puzzle y equal to i, right? And puzzle z bar puzzle y, puzzle z bar puzzle y equal to minus i, okay, like this, and then you get this one. So uh, to simplify our notation, we write this one as this one, and this one as this one. This one as this one, this one, okay? Now, uh, you can carry out your differentiation uh, twice, once again, to get puzzle f, puzzle x, twice, okay? And once and twice. And then, one defense operator, and the second defense operator. And then, you just do it, okay? Just like uh, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. And then this one, this one equal to this one. This one, this one equal to this one. This one, this one equal to this one. And this one, this one equal to this one. So you can you know, just uh, carry out the differentiation directly without trouble. Okay, you finally get this, uh, this uh, defense operator relation. Okay, see here. Parcel, parcel x. Parcel, parcel x. Defense operator, a uh, defense operator once, twice, and then you take it as a square, and then one, two, one. Okay, you get the uh, the exact expression. Now, how about this term? Uh, the the biharmonic equation, the first term of the of the of the biharmonic equation. Huh? You get four times, huh? and then one, two, three, four. As the one, two, three, four. Okay, and then four times, okay? Now, four times, you use the famous formula, one, four, six, four, one, okay? To help you. So you can just, you know, expand this, uh, this term by this one, okay? In the same deal, uh, uh, this is the uh, differentiation with respect to y four times, you can have similar thing. This one is just like this one. 
here. Okay, you have I as the coefficient. So I is four times. Okay, equal to one. And then here you expand this term as one four one four one minus minus. Okay, uh, in the same deal, you can carry out the differentiation here like this. You know, uh, this is the x operator. This is the y differential operator. Okay, and then uh, you just use the a plus b times a minus b formula to get a plus b times a minus b equal to a square minus b square. So a square minus b square. Okay. So you can have this easily, and then you expand this term as uh, one two one, uh, and then two so two four two. Okay. So uh, finally, we get these as the these four uh, three terms are the uh, main terms for the uh, biharmonic equation here, right? You sum it together. So when you sum it together, and then this one and this one. You get this one. This one, this one cancel out. This one, this one, you, you get 12. Okay? This one, this one cancel out. This one, this one get 2, right? And you have one more term, huh? like this one. Okay, this one copy here. But now, this one cancel out with this one. This one cancel out with this one. And then the remaining term is 12 and 4. You combine it. To get 16. So, finally, this equation becomes this equation, and then you, you can drop the coefficient 16 out to get this equation. Okay, finally, we end up with this equation. So, from this equation, we can have this equation. Okay, this is uh, the, the, the main part we want to divide this one to this one. Okay. So what will be the importance of this uh, result? Let me show you. With this equation, we can get the general solution of phi. See, all the focus, all the focuses, uh, you want to, yeah, you, uh, 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 you, you are concentrating, uh, are the solutions, OK? So, um, uh, if you have a equation like this, do you know how to get phi? Usually, it is not a very easy job. Huh? To get phi is not easy huh? by this equation. But I tell you, if you rewrite your equation in this form, it is easy to get phi. Okay. Once you get phi, you get everything. You get the stress, you get the strain, you get the displacement, right? So. You cannot obtain phi easily from this equation. So how how about deal with uh, how about to deal with this? You know? Let us show you. Huh? From this equation, you can you can get the general solution of phi easily. Let us do it. This one equal to this one. This equal to this, and then we this equal to this, and then you will integrate with respect to z. Okay. To get this one, and then the integration will give you a uh, integration constant, right? But this equation constant is a function of z bar because this is the differentiation with respect to z. So the integration constant is a function of z bar, okay? And then you rewrite this term into this, and then integrate with respect to z, okay? Here it with uh, integrate. Respect, with respect to z, in the way with respect to z, you get this drops out to get here. And this one, this one. And this is the integration constant. Now, z and z bar are independent, so you can carry out the integration without trouble to get this one. From here to get this one. And then now you rewrite our equation like this, and then integrate it with respect to z bar to get this one. And this one to get become this, this one to become this. This is the integration constant. Now um, you can integrate this again with respect to z bar to get this one. And this one become this. This one to become this. This one become this. And this is the integration constant. 
Now this is the arbitrary function, undetermined yet, so you can re redefine a function as this because it's a function of z bar, okay? We, we call it big G. And this is the big H, okay? And then we rewrite our equation like this, this one. And this one, this one. So I make some mistake here. This should be uh, changed from erase this one and take this to this. Okay, we get this. Okay, uh, we get this. Okay, this one is this one. So erase this part and then put this term here. So this is the general solution of the biharmonic equation. Uh, you can consult the book of Timoshin by Timoshenko and Goodyear, or by the, uh, another book of by Soklikov uh, to find out all the details of these calculations.